Hi lovelies! Oh my goodness, it's been such a long time since I've done a video and I've been meaning to do one but I wanted to make sure I was completely and utterly prepared and uh, that's like my type A coming in um, <laughs> uh, when I was just like, oh my god, it's a beautiful day out. It's probably the warmest day yet of the year, here anyway. Um, I live in New York so Oh my gosh, it's it's like, I'm dying right now. I'm wearing a t-shirt and I'm like, I shouldn't be wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> um, and I just threw some stuff in the crock pot. I'm actually cooking today and I'm drinking a glass of wine. So don't mind if I do. Mm. It's just one of those days where I'm off and damn it, I deserve a glass of wine. So today uh, I wanted to talk about how important it is to create for yourself and have a space creatively within you um, first and foremost. Now, I have some notes, so I'm just gonna be going back and forth, you yeah. know, again, type A. Uh, I think a lot of people fear art. Don't mind my cat. <laughs> I think a lot of people fear art. Um, I think that if you're not an artist or you don't consider yourself as an artist, it's very hard for people to kind of allow themselves to be vulnerable in that type of way, to be able to maybe draw or, you know, color, whatever the case is. I know they have those like adult coloring books now, which has really helped people. It's actually a proven fact that people who do art are more likely to be in a better mental health state. Uh, not that you're perfect, but it definitely will help you, you know, kind of adjust to certain things, maybe deal with certain traumas in your life, and that's why I utilize art and tarot together, I feel like. You can't ever have enough satisfaction or you can never have enough uh, therapeutic means for whatever the case is. Um, and combining divination and art, that has been done throughout history for, you know, 20,000 some odd years. People have always utilized spirituality and art together uh, in rituals, in fortune telling, uh, in so many aspects, uh, art and even music is very much a beautiful combination to allow people to express themselves and to worship their deity in whatever way possible. And art is such a, it's such an emotional, uh, power that feel closer to said deity, whatever you believe, by, you know, through art, music, writing, whatever the case is, um, along with ritual. It also very much, um, explores inner conflict and, um, it doesn't require training. Everybody who's very afraid of doing art, don't be afraid. It's not a quiz. It's not something that you can screw up. It's not something that you're being tested on or judged on. Um, and that is also, um, which leads me into how important it is to keep your own creative space. Now, if you're an artist or you consider yourself an artist of any kind, many people, you know, the first question they want to ask themselves is, how can I make money doing my passion? I mean, that's for anything. It doesn't have to be art, for anything. How can I make money doing my passion? Coming from that space, it's very difficult to allow yourself to create anything in any manner. For a really long time, I struggled with art it was very much a love-hate relationship. <laughs> I just felt I wasn't good enough. I compared myself a lot to other artists. And it was just very difficult for me to feel like I was connecting with my art because I 
the first question that I would ask myself is, is this going to sell? Am I going to get paid? It took me a very long time, and I still struggle with it, to allow myself to create for just me. So first, number one rule I wanna tell you, not everything is going to be a masterpiece. That's just the way it is. You're an artist, you're meant to mess up, you're meant to learn, you're meant to grow. The only way to do this is to make mistakes. Make those mistakes. Don't expect everything to be a masterpiece. Don't expect everything to be like, yep, this is going to sell. I need to have this sell. Let me make it perfect until it sells. Yes, I can be OCD like that. I completely understand if you guys feel that way. Oh my gosh, I can't put this out if it's, if it's not perfect. Then don't. Don't put it out. You don't need to put every single piece of artwork out. I know there's a very strong pull to do that, but staying authentic and keeping your creative space is so important when it comes to this. It's so freaking important. I can't stress enough how important it is. So, so Prince just recently died, and there was a news article that was out, or some article that was saying that Prince used to release a, an album a week something that I read about Kevin Smith who is a director writer producer what have you he uh, did a documentary for Prince and he was questioning when it was going to be released and Prince was like no this is going in my vault he had his own vault filled with creative uh, things that he was doing that he didn't want anybody else to see. That was for him and him alone. He was creating because he wanted to create. He was creating because he felt compelled to create. It wasn't for anybody else, it was just for himself. And I, I cannot stress enough how important it is to do that. It is so important to do that. He had the freaking right idea, guys. He really did. Because you then are coming from a, a place within yourself where you're reward, like it's rewarding you. It's rewarding you for doing your art. You're not going to be, oh, well, let me appease the masses. And that's what it will become. It will become this thing where you are appeasing the masses and it doesn't, it's, then it's not your art anymore. It becomes its whole, this whole other monster. And, you know, if you start creating things for other people, something that's going to appease them, something that they're going to like, and some things that you're going to sell, you know, if selling is number one thing, then you're going to get bored. You're going to get bored. You're going to freaking hate yourself. You're gonna freaking hate yourself for creating this monster. I'm telling you. A very long time to learn that what you produce is not for everybody. It's never going to be for everybody. But if you produce for the thought of yourself in mind and something that makes you feel satisfied in what you're doing and makes you feel understood and uh, fulfilled on a level that nobody else can touch, that's enough. That's enough. The selling will come. Or it won't. But you're not worried about it. So a big thing for me is creating and then deciding if I want to put it out on the market. I will create something for myself while I'm in it, use my own emotions. I, I'm an emotional painter, so I will utilize art when um, I feel like words can express what I'm feeling. Uh, if I just need to, if I need like serious alone time, I need to get into my own headspace. I will sit down with my paints and just dive right in. I will just dive right into it. And then I don't come up for air until I feel like all of this like stress and anxiety within me is out. It's completely out. Um, and then I will decide if a painting is finished, if it needs work, um, what I can tweak, what I can't. It's the majority of, of how I paint, but not all the time. Uh, when I paint like that, it's usually done. Like I will paint and paint and paint until I am 
finished until I feel like all of this emotion is now it's not within me now I don't have to carry it on my shoulders it's in a place it's physical I can look at it I can touch it I could feel it I can destroy it if I want to whatever I decide to do with those emotions is what I will de is what I decide and that's completely up to me I'm doing it for me I'm not doing it an audience member or a you know a, a someone who's going to buy my, you know, a client or whatever in mind. Now that is with art. Obviously with tarot, it's different because it is for the client. Um, it is a little different with that, obviously. With art, I feel like the moment you decide to sell out, we'll say, the moment you decide that, you lose moral standing with your art and you lose authenticity. Now, when I say moral standing, I, um, I feel like art is the foundation of the person that I am. And art is kind of like its own, for me, art is kind of like this own like living, breathing thing. You know, it's, it's a part of my spirituality. And I feel like art to me is almost like a god. <laughs> uh, not in the sense that like I pray to it, but we definitely have mutual, a mutual understanding of I will do this. I have a gift. I have worked at this gift. And there is a certain respect I have for this gift. The moment that I decide to take that gift and utilize it in a way where I am disrespecting myself and I am disrespecting where art comes from, then that is the moment where I have no moral standing. I am a complete piece of shit <laughs> and I uh, have no absolutely no more respect for myself or my art. And I personally, I will not be able to do that. I, I just can't do that. That's how I feel like my relationship with art works. Now it's very similar to tarot. The moment that you feel like you need to do this in order to gain something, in a negative way, then that's when it becomes fake. It becomes fake. It becomes something that's not based in this spiritual, loving, understanding way. Uh, and I feel like that's why I am so drawn to art and tarot together and how I feel that's the reason why I feel like they would make a perfect combination and would be perfect to use with clients because they both come from this moral standing where they should not be disrespected because the moment that they are, then that is when, you know, everything kind of falls apart at the seams. You know, there's no uh, structure there and I really do feel like there needs to be a structure of respect there. Art and Tarot together just produce this really magical combination. I really want to talk about the collective unconscious regarding art and symbolism and tarot and uh, yeah but I'll probably do that in my next video. Uh, you know start a dialogue with me, start a dialogue with me. I want to know, I want to know you know how do you feel when it comes to whatever you're passionate about? Do you feel like you have this moral standing or, you know, this back and forth or this mutual understanding with, you know, reinforce your art? Or do you do art for an audience and do you struggle with this? Or do you feel like it's just fine that you then you're okay with it? Um, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm really curious. I'm really curious. Now, I just want to say, too, because I'm not saying, like, do art for yourself and whatever. I feel as though if you're doing art for yourself and you decide to sell a certain type of art or a certain type of what whatever you're doing, um, 
if it's coming from a good place, then you would be able to make sales because I've made sales. Definitely, I've made sales, but it's things that I'm proud of. I'm proud to put up and say, this is my artwork. I did this. Um, and I feel like there is that, that comes with a certain kind of respect. You know, um, I'm not looking to... Uh, satisfy the masses. I'm not looking for that. And the moment that I decided that I wasn't looking for that, I became more proud of the art that I actually did put out instead of comparing and and struggling with that. So I'm not saying that just do it for yourself, but first and foremost, like you yourself are number one. You should be producing art that you are proud of and you should not be feeling like you are selling out to someone else or something else. You should always do art for yourself because that is where it originated. That is where it comes from. It comes from a spiritual place. It comes from a deep emotional place and art should always be that first, first. Um, I say create. Create and then the rest will fall into place. Create for yourself. Create for yourself and, and be proud of what you create. So that's it guys. Uh, uh, until next time, I love you all. Honestly, I would love to have a conversation uh, about this with, with any of y'all. So comment down below. I'll leave all of my hookups in the little box down there uh, in case you're curious to read more or find out more about me. It's all there. And yeah, enjoy this beautiful day if you're in New York. Love you all. And I'm going to be enjoying my wine. Oh. Cheers.